uh, once aquaporin intercalates in the luminal side of the principal cell, that allows water to come in through the lumen and then travel basolaterally through aquaporin 1, I think, um, basolaterally through aquaporins that are there in the basal lamina of the principal cell. Um, so, essentially, a fancy way of saying that when you activate the V2 receptor, aquaporins move to the luminal side of the cell, and so then water can pass through from the lumen, of, from the urine, back into the bloodstream, getting reabsorbed. So, the result being that TPR is increased from this effect, the urine is concentrated because we've reabsorbed some free water, and that brings the osmolality down to return to a set point. And volemia is brought back up to where it should be. All right. So, in our case, in hypovolemic hyponatremia, volume is down. And this effect is overriding any negative feedback from having osmolality be, uh, from, from having the urine be concentrated, okay? Because we can already see osmolality is low. Osmolality is low in all of these situations. So volume is down, causing a production in antidiuretic hormone despite the low osmolality and antidiuretic hormone causes us to uh, reabsorb more free water in the distal tubule. Alright, so let's swing back over here. Basically what happened was you sweated and drank water, not Gatorade, or you somehow in some other fashion lost your salt water, lost your chicken noodle soup from your blood vessels, and then Instead of replacing it with more chicken noodle soup, more Gatorade, you replaced it with free water. Now, it doesn't have to be your fault, okay? Lost water and salt, ADH got turned on and replaced it with free water. So was, this is your physiologic mechanism. But also your metabolism replaces, is constantly generating free water in those wonderful biochemical reactions that we learned about. And uh, so that contributes to this problem as well. So, hypovolemic, ADH is up. The next thing you want to do is assess your renal function, because this is going to tell you what the cause is. Now you can do this with a fena, or you can just do urine sodium. I prefer urine sodium because you need it for the fena anyway, so I'm going to just use the urine sodium. Um, now if the urine sodium is low, is less than 20, this is good, right? This is what the kidney is supposed to do if, if you're hyponatremic, your kidney should be hanging on to sodium, okay? Makes a lot of sense. So here's your happy kidney, he's like, I got this. He's hanging on to all the sodium. So the hyponatremia in this case is not the kidney's fault. The kidney is doing what it's supposed to in the face of hyponatremia. So in that case, it tells you that probably the reason your patient's hyponatremic is either from GI or skin loss. And here are some examples. Diarrhea, vomiting, pancreatitis. Okay, you're familiar with GI losses. And then skin loss would be sweating or burns. All right. Um, Coming over here, if our urine sodium is greater than 20, whoops, kidney's not doing what it's supposed to do in the hyponatremia, all right? So this is the kidney's fault, at least to some extent. And so why would it be the kidney's fault? Don't ever forget drugs, all right? So ACE inhibitors and thiazides. Well, ACE inhibitors work by decreasing among other things, angiotensin 2, but also angiotensin 2, remember that angiotensin 2 activates aldosterone, and so the decrease in aldosterone results in a decrease in sodium retention in the distal tubule, and loss of sodium there. Thiazides, <coughs> excuse me, thiazides also cause a decrease in uh, sodium absorption in the distal tubule, and so you get some sodium loss there. So that can contribute um, and then other causes, okay, Addison, so again, same mechanism as ACE inhibitor, right? Low aldosterone, low mineralocorticoids. This is an unhappy adrenal gland. Um, nephropathies, all right, so intrinsic diseases to the kidneys, no surprise there. And then this weird one called cerebral salt wasting syndrome. And this is a, sort of a poorly understood, but you get a head injury that results in an increase in ADH, 
um, an increase in BNP and a decrease in aldosterone. Okay, so aldosterone, 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 aldosterone. Um, we have we have low aldosterone here, and so kidney is spilling out salt instead of reabsorbing it. Uh, cerebral salt wasting syndrome also shows uh, refractory hypotension and low sodium, so it's a difficult condition to treat. All right, there we go. So, how do you treat? Uh, let, let me say the whole thing. Hypoosmolar, hypovolemic, hyponatremia. You treat it, here's pink, right? So pink is treatment, uh, by giving fluids. And we'll come back to general principles of treatment. But usually it's going to be isotonic fluids. Only if it's an acute will you give hypertonic. And uh, you are trying to replace the lost fluids and the salt. We'll come back to this. I don't want to talk about this yet. All right. So moving on. Now you have we have euvolemic hyponatremia. So clinician, you you say, oh, I don't know. The patient looks normal. I don't see any dry crack lips. He's not orthostatic. Blah blah blah. No JVD. And the clinician says, Yeah, you know, I kind of agree with you. Uh, the patient looks euvolemic. So again, we're going to take a look at the kidney. Only now we're going to assess the urine osmolality because we have a specific question, which is. Is ADH high or not? Over here, we knew ADH was high, all right, because the hypovolemia overrides the hypoosmolality. But right here, we aren't entirely sure. This is the only situation that we might not have a high ADH. So looking at the urine osmolality is a surrogate for looking at ADH. Now, we have two options here either it's less than 100 or it's more than 100. And if it's more than 100, <coughs> excuse me, then this is high. If it's less than 100, this is low. All right, so let's talk about low first, left to right. Um, if ADH is low, this is appropriate, right? Now, why do I mean appropriate? Because osmolality is low. Where are we? Here we go. Osmolality is low, all right? So, in the face of a low osmolality, ADH should not be being released, all right? Unless we have, like we said, this hypovolemia to override that and cause ADH production. All right, so it's appropriate for ADH to be low in, uh, in the setting of hypovolemic hyponatremia. Or, uh, sorry, euvolemic hyponatremia. Oh, listen to me. Um... And so, the reason that you would have a low, that you would have euvolemic hyponatremia with a low level of ADH is that you drank so much water that your kidneys cannot pee it all out. So, your, your kidney is working fine. Look at him. He's smoking a cigarette. He's gritting his teeth. He's like, ah, oh, water's coming in. He's blasting it out as fast as he can. But you are drinking so dang much water that the kidney cannot keep up. How much water does that take? Probably about 10 liters... All right, um, I've read anywhere from five to ten, but I think ten is probably a more accurate estimate because um, uh, it it will also depend on your kidney function, of course. Um, and we're talking about free water here, okay? The reason being that the kidneys need a certain amount of salt in order to generate urine. All right, they can't just pee out pure free water. There's got to be a little bit of salt in there, a little bit of salt. All right, and so. Um, to get rid of all this extra water, they have to get rid of some salt, and, uh, so if you are just tons and tons of water, putting in tons and tons of water, then, uh, the, even though they just need a little bit of salt to get rid of that water, they're still getting rid of more than, uh, than they would like, and that's producing a hyponatremic state. <coughs> and, uh, so what can cause this? Well, primary polydipsia, alright, psychogenic, somebody's drinking tons and tons of water all the time. Beer potomania, um, th this is a uh, interesting condition in which, uh, essentially, beer is uh, mostly free water, and so again, people just drinking tons and tons of beer, um, alcoholics tend not to have the best diets, and so they're not getting any salt from their diet either, um, and uh, so they end up basically, essentially like primary polydipsia, taking in tons of water, um, 
So the moral of the story being, put salt in your beer. Not only does it taste better, but it'll prevent you from getting beer potomania. Um, and then this last uh, case where you can have a reset osmostat. So this is something not really to worry about, just to be aware of, because uh, these people do fine. They just sort of operate at a constantly lower sodium than the rest of us. Um, and then this last one, tea and, tea and toast diet. Uh, oh, by the way, this can be seen in pregnancy. So um, just one reason that pregnant women can be hyponatremic, mildly hyponatremic. And then um, tea and toast diet. So again, not take sort of like beer potomania in that you're not taking in uh, really any salt at all. And so the, even, the small amount of salt that's required to produce urine, uh, even though it's dilute, is still more than you're taking in. And so you're ending up hyponatremic that way. All right, kind of rare conditions. And so usually when somebody is euvolemic, we assess the urine osmolality and it's greater than 100. And so ADH is high. And so what we're doing is we're producing an inappropriately concentrated urine, right? If, if we're hypoosmolar and hyponatremic, we should be di producing a dilute urine in an attempt to bring the osmolality and the sodium back up to where they should be. So, this is inappropriately concentrated. Now, we can't call it syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, SIADH, which is a diagnosis that all the internists love. Um, I love it, too, right? Until we rule out uh, hypothyroidism or hypocortisolism. Now, hypothyroidism, I don't know why, okay? I don't know why hypothyroidism can cause inappropriate ADH. All I know is that hypothyroidism can cause pretty much anything, so why should it not cause inappropriate ADH? Hypocortisolism can cause inappropriate ADH. Oop. Hold on just a second, folks. Sorry for the interruption. But I'm about to lose battery. And this is not possible. Alright. We're good. Um, hypocortisolism can cause inappropriate uh, ADH as well. Um, as you see over here, because cortisol inhibits the release of ADH. So when cortisol goes low, ADH goes high. All right. Um, so if we've ruled those out, and in addition we've ruled out hypovolemia and hypervolemia, right, because these both have high ADH for um, other reasons, the low volume in hypovolemia, sorry, I'm going all over the place here, and hypervolemia, I'm going to jump ahead of myself, but in hypervolemia, it's essentially the same mechanism as hypovolemia in that there's, there's an increased fluid, but it's not in the vessels, the fluid is not in the vessels, and so, um, renal angiotensin aldosterone system is is uh, activated, renal perfusion is decreased. In essence, your body sees a hypovolemic state. All right. And uh, so again, that overrides the uh, osmolar osmolarity mechanism and so this decreased volume causes an increase in ADH. So to go back here, once we've ruled those out, here we go. There we go. Um we have a hyponatremia, hypoosmolar uh, hyponatremia, a true hyponatremia. We've ruled out edematous state, thyroid, and adrenal disease, so hypothyroidism, hypocortisolism, 